Hello and welcome to Buyer and Borrow, where every game is worth playing. Now, since I first said those, I kind of had this mm, wiggling feeling in the back of my mind that not everybody's going to agree with that or be able to participate in that. And so, I figured, why not make a new segment? This one I'm titling Bargain Bin Gaming. Games you can get for $20 or less. Because, I hate to say it, but not everybody can afford a monthly subscription service to an online gaming rental, and the standard gaming rental machines just don't really have that much of choice to them nowadays outside of the new releases. So anything older kind of falls by the wayside. And that's what we're going to take a look at now. Seeing as today is what today is, happy in seven day! And welcome to the very first episode where we take a look at the first Mass Effect. This is one of my absolute favorite gaming series ever. Just full stop. And this is one of my absolute favorite games. Now, since we're right here, we'll load up. Now, Mass Effect is a space opera, and that's honestly all you need to know. You know, I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's check out what I am. For points and purposes, let's just auto-level you up, auto-level you... Well, yeah, you'll be around. <laughs> and auto-level me up. I don't even remember creating this shepherd. I have... Oh, I'm an engineer. Okay. Now, before anybody asks, yes, this game handles combat kind of clunkily. It runs as a third-person shooter, and this is the days before Gears of War's roll into cover combat became everything. That won't happen until number two, at least, which I will admit gameplay-wise, is a far superior game. However, as far as standard games go, uh... Oh, okay, I just put it away. I forget. Every other game, the button you push to retract your gun usually leads to you meleeing somebody. Now, this is a game from the people who brought you games like Star Wars The Old Republic and... What am I trained in? Equip us. Assault Rifle. And Jade Empire. And those really, really have an impact on this game. And if you've ever played either of those, you can tell. We may get to those. I'm not real sure. That might be a little further back. Another reason I figured I'd do this one is the fact that we've got another one just around the corner, practically. Oh, I'm a low level, so this may not go too well. Oh! Okay. Well, that went better than I thought. Anyway, let's dig into this game. You play as Commander Shepard. Now, you can create your Shepard to be male or female. Personally, I prefer Jennifer Hale's voice performance in the first game over Mark Mir, mostly because she tends to put a little more punch to her voice acting, at least for this one. Mark Mir isn't bad, but he comes off a little more stoic, I guess would be the best way to describe him. Uh, well, we can't help him right now. The rest of us just have to carry on. We still have to find that beacon. It comes down to a personal choice. I prefer, I prefer her version, but yeah. How do I... Ah, there we go. Yeah, that was me trying to figure out which buttons make the uh, cover system work. For you, it's run up and uh, just push into an object. For everybody else, you have to direct. There we go. Anyway, back to the story. You play as Commander Shepard, 
an elite, what's known as an N7 operative. You're like the best of the best of the absolute best for reconnaissance and stealth work. Okay, good lord. And this is how you start your game, with a shakedown run for an untested stealth prototype ship. On its way to this, what was, a paradise world, Eden 7. Now from here, you land and find everything in absolute disarray and chaos. You also find out that you are being selected as a candidate for what's known as the Spectre Program. And that is an elite group of agents and soldiers from anywhere in the universe. You would be the first human accepted into their ranks. And this, as your test run, shows what humanity is capable of. Now, the real reason I love this game more than the others is predominantly because of the world building. This game had to work the hardest, had to be the biggest driver for making sure that everything was understandable and knowledge. And it's all there. You're never beat over the head with it. You're never forced to sit and listen to 400 pages of exposition and just general crap to wade through for... Oh, that hurt to understand what's going on. You're presented with your primary enemy, the Geth, killing humans, and you have to try and save the universe from them. I won't spoil anything because I literally do believe this is one of the better game stories to have come out in the last several years. Like I say, I know I'm going to be catching some flack for that probably, but Whatever. All right, Commander Williams. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. He the one in charge here, ma'am. Give me a status report. Now, Williams. from there, oh, yeah, I he just really, like really like this it's galaxy they created. It looks unique, it looks stylized, but at the same time, it feels normal and natural. Nothing looks wildly out of place. Even the aliens look good. They look like they fit the world that they're in. And that's honestly really all I can say for this. You're given a morality system that you can work with and work with your people or work against them, sort of. You can be nice or you can be an asshole. The choice is yours. Either one gets you there, but you're not always going to sometimes like how you get there sometimes. Hmm... Go ahead and level that up. Decryption. Level up her combat armor. There we go. Alright. Take that. And from here you can select who wears what armor what kind of amplifiers they have, and what weapons they use. Now the kicker for all this lies in what weapons you specialize in. Now anybody can use any kind of weapon, but not everybody's going to be good at everything. For example, I'm an engineer, so I can have... I start off with a pistol because I picked a specialty, I can also use a lancer. Now, well, that's just my assault rifle, actually. Lancer's what I have. But, by that token, while I can use a shotgun or a sniper rifle, I don't get any of their boosts. Show you what I'm talking about. I'm trying to zoom in right now and I can't. I can still fire it. 
I can still aim, sort of, but I'm no good with it. Now, the shotguns, that doesn't really matter. Widespread... Just point and shoot. See if I can't take care of some bad guys right quick. And, like I said, this game can be a little clunky sometimes. Oh, that didn't work. Neither did that. I am almost dead. Ah, crap. Okay, shotgun's gonna have to wait for a minute. And... Alright, now I can show the shotgun. Now, while I'm not good with it, with a shotgun, it really doesn't matter. The objective is get up in somebody's face, punch the hell out of them, or shoot them down. So, not being trained with some weapons is okay, but at the same time, it's not as precise. And it creates an interesting edge. It forces you to think outside of what would normally be doable. Unless you want to play a soldier, in which case you're not allowed access to the electronics, like overloading people's shields or turrets or machinery. Ooh, excuse me. And at the same time, you're not allowed access to the biotics, which allow you to lift people off the ground or create mini black holes and shoot people into space with them. And those are a lot of fun. Seriously, biotics are probably the main way I play this game. But it creates an even and delicate balance. And forces you to try and do something new and different. Yeah, I know I just said that, but I feel it needs reinforcement. Too many games try and stray too far into the middle, and they end up feeling generic and mundane. This game... I am so happy to say, absolutely does not. And damn, when I'm first fighting these things, are they impossible, nearly. Come on, come on, go down, go down, go down. Okay. In pure zombie fashion, it's way better if you hit a shotgun with these guys. All right, now then, should have some stuff up here I can use. Good, good, guns, stuff. Now, you saw I just got something, it's called Omnigel. With that, what I can do is I can use it to open locks, as seen here. Now, if you want to do that, you get a quick time. Now, I can override here, but if I have enough, I can use the Omnigel that I have on hand and just simply use it as a bypasser. Well, there's something over here, it says. Although that might just be my waypoint. I think it's my waypoint. But, yeah, like I say, the game's not without its merits. There can be some weird texture pops sometimes, and the dialogue from some of your companions can come off as a little weird. But other than that, this is a damn solid game. While the controls might be off-putting to some, at least as far as the minutia goes, they're not bad. Especially for an untested system. Well, I say untested, but something that wasn't done a whole lot until this one came about. And even then, after this one came out, they ditched the same control scheme in favor of a more conventional version. Alright. Open this door. Yeah, you can see what I was talking about right there with her hands. They don't look too good. Don't worry. We'll protect you. Thank you. I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. But yeah, this game is absolutely one of my absolute favorite games. Good story, good concrete. 
ending to it, I guess you could say. This could have been a standalone game, and if it was, I would have been absolutely fine. The fact that it goes above and beyond and becomes more just makes things so much better. If you've ever wondered what Star Trek and Star Wars would look like if they had the greatest baby of all time and allowed you to be in it, it would be Mass Effect. There's just enough of the strange and the out there with just enough of the science and the diplomatic to be both. It's a fun game, a great ride, and if you're looking for a good science fiction game, you can do a lot worse than this, I can tell you that. Well, that's about it. Let me know what you guys think of Mass Effect, the first, and uh, in the comments down below. Be sure to hit the comment and the like button and the subscribe if you enjoyed all this. And let me know if you want to see more. Until then, until next time, we'll see you later. Sarah. Lilas. This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control.